Planet of Fire is the fifth serial of the 21st season in the British science fiction television series Doctor Who, which was first broadcast in four twice-weekly parts on BBC One from 23 February to 2 March 1984. In the serial, the alien time traveller the Master Anthony Ainley plots to use the volcanic gases on the planet San to renew his body after accidentally shrinking himself in an experiment. This story marks the final regular appearance of Mark Strickson as Vislaw Turlock and introduces Nicola Bryant as Perry Brown. It also is the second and final appearance of the shapeshifting robot Chameleon, who is played at various points throughout the serial by Gerald Flood, Dallas Adams, and Ainley. Topic. Plot On the desert world of San, robed natives worship the fire god Loga and follow the chief elder, Tamanoff, who demands obedience. Dissenters are known as unbelievers and two of them, Amiand and Roskal, cause unrest when they claim to have ventured to the top of the sacred fire mountain but not found Loga. One of the Sans, Malkin, is known as the Chosen One because of the unusual double triangle symbol burnt into his skin, he is also unusual for having been found as a baby on the slopes of the sacred fire mountain. The same triangle symbol is found on a metal artifact uncovered in an archaeological dig in Lanzarote overseen by Professor Howard Foster. His stepdaughter Perry Brown is bored with the dig and wants to go traveling in Morocco and when he seeks to prevent this she steals the strange artifact and tries to swim for freedom. Fortunately for her the TARDIS has landed nearby. Responding to a distress call sent by the strange artifact. And Turlock sees her drowning and rescues her. Going through her possessions as she recovers he finds the artifact and acknowledges the same triangle symbol is burnt into his own flesh. The fifth doctor returns to the TARDIS after attempting to triangulate the source of the signal being emitted by the artifact, and the ship dematerializes, seemingly on its own. It soon arrives on San and the doctor and Turlock set off to explore. The android chameleon has meanwhile made mental contact with its old controller, the Master, who attempts to assert his control and change Chameleon's appearance from that of Howard. Chameleon tries to warn Perry of the Master but the Master succeeds in gaining control. She flees the TARDIS with the creature in pursuit as the rumblings of the volcanoes of San gather ferocity. In the San colony Tamanoff has damned the unbelievers to be sacrificed to appease Loga and stop the tremors. They flee to a secret base in the mountains filled with seismological apparatus, which the Doctor and Turlock stumble across. The Doctor informs the unbelievers that the tunnels, which have been their refuge, are volcanic vents which will soon fill with molten lava. It is also established that Turlock is of the same race as those who colonized the planet, and when the indigenous people see his Miso's triangle, they greet him as a second chosen one. Turlock realizes Malkin may be his brother and becomes even more worried when Perry turns up and mentions the Master. Another important figure in San mythology is the Outsider, a promised prophet, and Chameleon, controlled by the Master, fulfills this role admirably. He convinces Tamanoff of the appropriateness of harsh action and when the Doctor arrives with the unbelievers they are all seized for burning. However, Malkin and Perry arrive shortly afterwards and stop this, though not before Malkin has been injured. Turlock is aghast when he finds his relative has been shot and the doctor presses him for as much information as he has on the strange circumstances of San. It seems it is a long-abandoned Tryon colony planet, and that Turlock, a Tryon, suspects some of his family were sent here after a revolution against the hereditary leading clans of his homeworld. He supposes his father died in a crash but that Malkin survived, while he himself was sent in exile to Earth, overseen by a Tryon agent masquerading as a solicitor in Chancery Lane. Chameleon has meanwhile seized Perry and uses her to transport a black box into the control room of his TARDIS. It contains a miniaturized master, the real thing, who has been transformed by a disastrous experiment with his trademark tissue compression eliminator TCE weapon. The master thus re-established the psychic link with Chameleon to gain the power of movement and has maneuvered the robot to San so that he can take advantage of the restorative powers of the numismaton gas within the fire mountain. Turlock realizes the imminent volcanic bursts will destroy the San colony, so he uses a functioning communication unit to get in touch with Tryon and plead for a rescue ship to evacuate the planet. In so doing, he abandons his own freedom. Acting on a message from the Doctor, Turlock programs the TARDIS to rescue the Doctor and Perry from the gas control room, foregoing a chance to stay aboard and escape from the military arriving from his homeworld. 
He finds out that a general amnesty has been issued and he is free to return home. Only the elders choose to remain on the planet to die, facing the erupting volcanoes, to man off retaining his faith even in the face of Amiens' revelation that Loga was merely a man in a fireproof suit. Another deception. The Doctor, meanwhile, succeeds in weakening the Master's hold over Chameleon and interrupts the Numismaton experiment. He adds calorific gas to the surge but is unable to prevent the Master from reacquiring his usual size and becoming, he taunts, a thousand times stronger. As the gas flow alters, the Master is trapped and the Doctor does not intervene despite his oldest enemy's threats and then pleading, watching as he is seemingly immolated. Implored by the terminally wounded chameleon, the Doctor has put the automaton out of its misery using the TCE. Escaping the destruction of the gas control room in the TARDIS along with Perry, the Doctor lands to pick up Turlock, only to find that he has elected to return to Tryon now that he is a free man. Turlock tells Perry to look after the Doctor. He then parts from the Doctor, thanking him for all that he has learned in his travels with him. As the Doctor and Perry return to the TARDIS, she says she has a few months' vacation left and would like to spend it traveling with him. The Doctor accepts and they depart. <laughs> Topic. Production Topic. Costumes It was decided that because of the climate of Lanzarote, where the serial was filmed, the cast would have to alter their usual costumes. Although Peter Davison started the story wearing his cricketer outfit, for the rest of the story, he wore a different pair of trousers with question mark braces and a beige floral waistcoat. Strixon shed his usual school uniform in favor of a blue pin stripe shirt and tan shorts with a pair of swim briefs underneath. Nicola Bryant also wore a pink bikini beneath her clothes to which she stripped down for a couple of scenes. Topic. Cast notes Mark Strickson has also reprised the role of Turlock in the audio plays by Big Finish Productions and penned the introduction to the spin-off novel Turlock and the Airthlink Dilemma 1986. Promotional photographs taken during production include a shot of Peter Davison wearing a tuxedo and holding a gun, with Nicola Bryant standing next to him in a bikini, in the style of James Bond. Eleanor Bron was originally considered for the role of Sarasta. This serial was originally intended as the swan song for Anthony Ainley as the master since his contract with the show had come to an end, hence the death of the character in the numismaton flames at the story's climax. As a deliberate tease for the audience, the master's truncated final line is, Won't you even show mercy to your own? With him apparently being killed by the gas just as he is about to reveal the true nature of his relationship to the Doctor. However, the master reappeared in the following seasons The Mark of the Rani without explanation as to how he survived the flames. Script editor Eric Sayward cut from the Mark of the Rani the explanation for the Master's survival provided by writers Pip and Jane Baker but the explanation is in their novelization of the serial. Topic. Reception Planet of Fire received mixed reviews. Writing for the Radio Times, Patrick Mulkern observed that writer Peter Grimwade laces his script with homosexual subtext, noting in particular the male eye candy on display, claiming, Old Sage Tamanov's mentoring of callow youth Malkin has a hint of pederasty, and also commenting on the unmistakably phallic object, hauled from the seabed and fondled by Howard, Kurt and Perry, Paul Cornell, Martin Day and Keith Topping thought that new companion Perry made a good impression, helped by some decent lines. They said, as a whole the story is less than the sum of its parts, not a great deal happens, but it is competently written, and the location filming is excellent. <laughs> Topic. Commercial releases Topic. In print A novelization of this serial, written by Peter Grimwade, was published by Target Books in October 1984. 
A prologue juxtaposing the crash of the vessel Professor Foster is salvaging with the crash of the Trion ship carrying Turlock's family to Sarn opens the novelization. The master's teasing last line, Won't you save your own? is removed. Topic. Home media Planet of Fire was released on VHS in September 1998. The DVD was released in June 2010, with commentary by Peter Davison, Nicola Bryant, Mark Strickson and Fiona Cumming, as part of the box set Chameleon Tales along with The King's Demons. It also contained a special edition edit of the story overseen by director Fiona Cumming. The special edition edit also included a specially filmed prequel before the opening titles. At a mere 66 minutes it is the shortest and the most edited of the special editions. This serial was also released as part of the Doctor Who DVD files in issue 116 on 12 June 2013.